kind of help me with the message. So, you know, so often I stand up here on Sunday and I you know, talk for a while, but today I'd love your help with that. So, to help us out, we're going to play a game. So, have you guys ever played Spaceman before? No. Okay, me neither, but we're going to play it together this morning. It's very similar to Name Man, all right? So I'm going to need you to come sit over here on this first pew. So can you come over here? Uh, you can have your backpacks with you or not. You're going to need them later, but not right now. So if you want to take a seat on this first pew. Good, good. I'm just going to move these out of the way so I don't trip on. There we go. Okay, so um, to play this game, we all have to know our ABCs. Does everyone know your ABCs? Then I'm going to write it up here, and if it is in the secret message that we're going to decode as part of our lesson today, I'm going to write it in the message. If it's not, I'm going to start drawing a spaceman. So your object is to decode the message before I draw the spaceman completely done, okay? So, uh, when we get closer to the end, maybe we can start guessing this. Okay, so, um, Hunter, what's your letter? Do you have a clue? A? No clue yet. A. There are some A's. Yeah. 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 All right, Grace, what letter do you want? T. T. There is some T's. There are some T's. Thank you. 
Michael Mitchell Mason. Yeah, what a great <laughs> characters. Thank you, adults. So, so we've got your secret message. And so in this story that we just heard, God, that's close, it's close. Uh, I, you didn't ever guess it, and you just told me Samuel. So that was the fun hint I gave you. So um, in this story that we just heard, there are three main characters. God, Eli, and Samuel. And so what we're going to do right now is actually act this out a little bit with a modern twist uh, with giving you guys a chance to be one of these three characters. So I want to give you a bit of a background for these three characters so that you know which one you might want to be. So God, who is God? How would you guys answer that question? How would you answer the question, who is God? How would you answer? Strongest person in the world. Okay, strong. He's strong. Chase? Jesus, God's in that breath. Invincible. Yeah, he's from the blood, from the flesh. Okay. He's big and tall. God is big, right? Bigger than our imagination. God also is the creator, right? So God created the land and the trees and the hippopotamuses and the seagulls and you and me. So God is the creator. Narwhals, God created narwhals. So God is the creator. And do you know why God created us? Why did God create us? Lord knows. Because God loves us. So uh, the Bible tells us that God is love. That God loves us so much that he created us and sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, to wipe away the sins in our lives. We talked about sin last week. Remember that? How we talked about sin as a barrier? between us and our relationship with God and one another. Like, if grace starts lying about me, that's a barrier in our relationship, right? But Jesus wipes away the sin in our lives to call us to love God and love others. So, God is love, and God plays an important role in calling Samuel in this story. Eli. Does anyone know who Eli is besides Eli? Eli. <laughs> Who's Eli in the Bible? Does anyone know about this guy? A person? A person? How about adults? Does anyone know who Eli is? He's a priest. A priest. Good, good. So Eli is a priest, which would kind of be like a modern-day pastor. And he, Eli hung out in God's house, which we call the temple or uh, in the Hebrew Bible, or we would call it like a church today. So Eli's job was to hang out in the temple and to help people worship God. But Eli was an old man, and he was going blind. He could barely see. Eli also had two sons that were really bad. They did some really bad things that dishonored God and were corrupting the whole people of Israel and interfering with their relationship with God. And so in this story, uh, God is replacing Eli and Eli's sons who are serving as priests with new leadership, with Samuel, to help bring the people closer to God. Okay, so that's Eli. Samuel, have you guys ever heard about Samuel before? You've heard about him, okay? Do you know anything about Samuel? Good, all right. Do you know who Samuel's mom was? No. The adult. Who was Samuel's mom? Hannah. Han Who's Samuel's mom? Hannah. Hannah, right. You guys know anyone else named Hannah? Oh, right. That's who I'm named after. So Samuel's mom, his name is Hannah. Hannah really wanted to have a kid, but she couldn't have a kid. And so often her and her husband, Elkanah, Elkanah is a pretty crazy name, but anyway, Hannah and her husband, Elkanah, would go to the God's house where Eli was serving as the priest, and she would pray for a son. And she was praying for a son with all of her energy that Eli, the priest who hung out of God's temple, Eli thought that Hannah was drunk because she was praying with that much energy. Now also remember, Eli was going blind. He couldn't really see. So maybe that was part of why he thought she was drunk. But really she was just praying with that much passion because she really wanted God to answer her prayer. So Eli's like, why are you drunk? And she's like, I'm not drunk, I'm just praying. And Eli's like, oh, okay, I really hope then that God will answer your prayer. And sure enough, Hannah ends up having a child named Samuel. And Hannah promises God that she'll dedicate Samuel to give his whole life to serving God. So when Samuel's probably about three years old, Hannah brings him back to God's house where Eli is. And Samuel serves with Eli and becomes a priest, serving in God's, help, in God's house, helping people worship God. But today's story about Samuel is not just about how he served as a priest, but how he is called by God to become a prophet who will speak God's word to the people. Okay? So we have God, Eli, Samuel. So I need three volunteers 
who will serve as our first God, Samuel, and Eli. So, God, who are you, are you volunteering for? God, all right. Yeah. Who are you volunteering for today? Uh, we need you to be either Eli or Samuel this round. Samuel, all right. Grace, who would you like? Would you be Eli? Okay, awesome. So, God, I need you to go back with Mr. Matt. Can you go hang out with him? Um, Aaron's going to come forward and help Samuel. So, Samuel, can you go chill up here with the backpacks? I need you to um, make yourself a bed right up front here by the, by the altar. All right, so you want to make a bed. Um, and Eli, I need you to take this and head back to Mr. Rob with your supplies. All right, there you go. Perfect, yep. Okay, so I'm going to retell this story one more time, reading from the scripture that the, uh, was read for us earlier, and we're going to act it out with a little bit of a modern twist, and I want us to pay attention to see what we learn from this story, okay? So is everyone ready? Looking pretty good. Okay. In those days when the boy Samuel was serving God under the direction of Eli, there were very few messages. And visions from God were quite rare. One night, Eli, who was now almost blind, so Eli can be blindfold you. <laughs> Eli, who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room. Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary, where the sacred covenant box was, or the Ark of the Covenant, that was the symbol of God's presence that had the tablets from the Ten Commandments. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, God called Samuel. So, God, you want to call Samuel? Give Samuel a call. <laughs> Samuel got up and ran to Eli. You want to go see Eli? Come on, let's go see Eli. Come on, let's go see Eli. Go more. Go back and see Eli. And Samuel said to Eli, what are you after me? You called me? You called me? You, you can say you called me? And here I am. But Eli answered, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. Did you come back to bed? All right, cool. So that was round one. Let's give our actors that I know. Samuel 
I'll send to Eli. He called me. And here I am. And Eli realized that it was God who was calling the boy. So he said to him, go back to bed. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So send him back to bed. All right, that was round three. Anywhere. So I think this is important truth 
for us to remember about Samuel's story. So I actually came up with a little way for us to remember this. So God can speak to us at any age, no matter how little or how big you are, at any time, anywhere. Good. So can you guys stand up and do that with me? So God can speak to us any age, any time, anywhere. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Let's do it again. God can speak to us any age, any time, anywhere. All right. One more time. God can speak to us any age, any time, anywhere. Great. And so you can have a seat. And I feel like this is so important because God really can speak to us any age, any time, anywhere. And sometimes we might hear God's voice, like Samuel heard it and really thought it was like Eli talking to him because it's such a real voice he could hear. In fact, my mom has a story of where she felt like she heard God's voice speaking to her, calling her to be a pastor. Sometimes we're going to hear God's voice like that. Sometimes it might be like a still, small voice, almost like a whisper. Sometimes it might just be this sense of peace that you get in your heart when you're praying, that you know God wants you to do something or behave in a certain way. But sometimes in our lives, our lives get really noisy. Are there some, like, television shows you guys like to watch? Or, yeah, she has videos to watch. Um, YouTube? Yeah? Do you have some favorite YouTubers that you follow? Um, I don't know if they're called, but I watch them Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Dennis. Yeah. Yeah, Michael, do you have some favorite ones to watch? I do. So sometimes when we're watching television or YouTube, sometimes the volume can get really loud, right? Right? We're too into watching what we're going on. The same can happen with our relationship with God. Right? Exactly. Or it could be like when you're playing sports and your coach is trying to tell you something, but it's too loud in there that you can't hear it. And sometimes that happens with our relationship with God, that our lives get really busy or noisy, and we can't always hear God speaking to us. So it's important to take time uh, when we come to church to listen to God speak to us, when we pray at home, when we read our Bible, when we talk with other Christians. All of these are ways that God can speak to us because God can speak to us at any age, any time, anywhere. All right? Great. So let's stand up and actually let's show it to the adults because I think this is an important lesson for them to learn as well. All right? For us all this morning. So God can speak to us any age, any time, Anywhere. All right, one more time. God can speak to us any age, any time, anywhere. All right, you guys can have a seat. And I just want to close this morning by talking briefly with the adults. In this passage, we are all Samuel in some extent, extent that God can speak to us any time, any age, any time, anywhere. But we also, who maybe are a little more mature in life and our Christian faith, we're also Eli in this story. And Eli wasn't perfect. Eli had messed up. But God still used Eli to speak into Samuel's life. That God used Eli to help young Samuel know that it was God who was speaking to him and calling him. And so we have roles to play in these young Samuel's lives. Of being Eli, to help them know God's voice, help them know who God is, to help them see the gifts and abilities God has already given them, that they're living into, to be the people God's calling them to be. In fact, many of you know my husband, Chris, and when he tells the story of how he first felt called to be a pastor, it was because of this older man, Eli, in his congregation, his name was Lee Hummel, who came up to Chris after he was given the opportunity to preach his first sermon as a teenager in his home church. And Lee Hummel came up to Chris with tears in his eyes and said that he saw the gifts that God had placed in his heart, that he felt that Chris might be called to be a preacher. And Chris still points to that story today. And that man named Lee Hummel, who was an Eli in Chris's life, to help him see that this calling that God has placed on his life. So who knows what these young Samuels will grow into being. Maybe some of them will be pastors or missionaries or lawyers or doctors or sports players or firefighters. Whatever God calls them to be, we pray that they are faithful into what God has for them. And we pray that we can be faithful in our role to help pray for them and help them know that God can indeed speak to them at any age, any time, anywhere. So right now, I actually want to take a moment to pray for these young Samuels as they prepare to head back to school. So if you guys want to grab your backpacks, 
Um, and I want to invite everyone forward, if you are a parent of one of these young Samuels, or a grandparent, or if you're heading back to school, if you're a teacher, or a 